Good morning, everyone. Thank you for tuning in this morning. We're continuing this morning in our uh, Sermon on the Mount series. And this morning we're talking about how Jesus is trying to pull our focus onto the bigger picture, to remember and recognize God as the provider, to break us free from the chains of anxiety and worry that hold us down in our lives, and to live a life faithfully obedient to God the provider. Thank you for tuning in this morning, and I pray that God may speak some truth into your heart this morning. I remember when I first saw that movie. I think it was like five or six. I was really young. That, hands down, no question, is my favorite movie of all time. It doesn't matter what other movie comes out. That Jurassic Park is the greatest movie. It, and we could, we could talk about it, right? We could stand up here. Like the, the impact that movie had on CGI and animatronics, how it pushed cinema forward, how how it developed the science, the, the science fiction genre, how it made it more real rather than just this outlandish space, like, oh, it's never gonna happen. You know, Jurassic Park was real. That was really there. How it inspired real science. That movie came out and, and, and real scientists took steps based off of what they saw in that movie. Well, what can we do to advance, to make that a reality? I guess that I was five or six. It was the coolest thing that I saw come across the TV. Because for the two hours that that movie was on, in my world, dinosaurs were real. They existed. They weren't something that went extinct long ago. Dinosaurs weren't, they weren't animated. They weren't claymation, right? They were, they were there. They weren't something that existed in a jungle long ago. I didn't turn the TV on and okay, well, that's long, long ago. They, they were there in my time. I could go and see these dinosaurs for two hours. There was a park that existed. There was an island where dinosaurs were alive and I could go see them. Even though Jurassic Park's a thriller movie, right? It's honestly got some scary moments. It's pretty intense. You know, spoiler alert, people die in Jurassic Park, right? It's, it's kind of a scary movie. It didn't matter to me. I was able to look past it. I knew it was a movie. And what I chose to see when that would come on is a reality where I could have a pet dinosaur. <laughs> and in the scary parts, in those moments where I didn't want to look at the screen, I, I found comfort. I knew it was okay because it was, it was just a movie. The screen would go black, the credits would roll, and I'd go back to my boring life with no dinosaurs. Right? Safe, but boring. I think that's the ultimate magic of movies and storytelling. That for a brief moment in our lives, when we, when we turn on a movie, when we open a book, we can step into a world, into a reality that we choose, where it can be what we want it to be. We get to have dinosaurs living alongside people, or maybe we step into a world where, you know, there's a school that sends letters out and kids can get taken away and learn magic. There's something about storytelling that can distract us from the real world. The real world where scary things are happening, where the unknown is right around the corner. It's inevitable. It's ever-present. It's inescapable. The real world, the reality that humans have been trying to escape since the very beginning of time with the distraction of stories, of games. But no matter how hard you try to get away, the screen always goes black. The credits roll, and reality is always there right before you. Standing on the mount, standing on the mount there before the crowd that had gathered, Jesus sought to break through the anxiety that floods humanity's reality. Jesus wanted to silence the storm of the broken and hurting world and usher in peace, a peace more permanent than what could be found in the escape of a good story, a peace that requires us to refocus our hearts and minds onto the one who matters. Jesus stands before the crowd and he says, don't store up your treasures here on earth. Store your treasures in heaven. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. No one can serve two masters, 
For you will hate one and love the other. You will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. This refocusing, we talked about it over the past couple weeks. Jesus is drawing our eyes onto something bigger to break us free from the distractions of our world so that way we may have a focus set on God, on his eternity, free from the temporal. Jesus continues in Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 through 27. That is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life. Whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear, isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns. Your heavenly Father feeds them. And they aren't, far, aren't you far more valuable to him than they are. Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? You know, as we read, as modern Christians through this, it almost feels as though Jesus took this really swift turn. He went from wise teacher to that one kid in class who was a really good friend, but you really didn't want to have him work with you on a partner project, right? Don't worry, man. It'll work out. You'll have enough food. I mean, you'll, you'll, you'll figure it out. Bro, isn't life more than food? Is it, isn't your body more than clothing that you put on it? It, it almost feels like Jesus is introducing this new age kind of meta philosophy, this idea that, you know, we could all strive to live by, look at the birds, man. They don't worry. They don't worry about where food's coming from. The Heavenly Father, he feeds them. And worrying doesn't add any time to your life, man. You know, when I read through this part of scripture, I just hear Jesus going, chill, breathe. And in my humanness, I just kind of laugh at it, right? I mean, it's a nice idea. Don't worry about everyday life. Isn't life more than food? Isn't your body more than clothing? It's a nice idea. But that's not how the world works. We live in a tangible existence. Tomorrow is coming. I have a family I have to provide for make sure it's safe. I need to make sure I can pay my bills. I need to make sure that Tomorrow, if, if my car breaks down, I can fix it. If I, if I get a hole in my shoe, I can get new shoes. That's how the world works. Don't worry about everyday life. Okay, maybe someday. Tomorrow's coming, whether I want it to or not. But I tell you not to worry about everyday life. Whether you have enough food or enough drink or enough clothes to wear, isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? It may feel like Jesus is talking about some idealistic philosophy that we're all striving to reach at some point. At some point, we'll be able to live worry-free. But the truth is that Jesus, he didn't switch into this hippie philosophical mode. He never stopped being the wise teacher. I tell you not to worry about everyday life. It's not an ideal for us to work towards. It's actionable instruction for life now. Jesus is zooming out to see the big picture, to break free from the distractions that the enemy lays in our path. Do not worry about everyday life. This doesn't mean to abandon all reasoning, right? When we hear this, we go, okay, well, maybe for some people, they can just shirk all responsibilities, but I, I've got bills to pay. I have, people are expecting me to do things, and that's not what Jesus is calling for. He doesn't say to abandon those things. Proverbs chapter 3 verses 21 through 26 tells us, my child, don't lose sight of common sense and discernment. Hang on to them for they will refresh your soul. They are like jewels on a necklace. Keep them safe on your way and your feet will not stumble. You'll be able to go to bed without fear. You will lie down and sleep soundly. You do not need to be afraid of sudden disaster or the destruction that comes upon the wicked. For the Lord is your security. He will keep your foot from being caught in a trap. Jesus is calling for us to live a life of faithful obedience. That we should not be anxious about the unknowns of tomorrow. Don't worry about everyday life. Whether you have enough food, drink, or clothes to wear. Life is more than the food that you eat. And your body is more than your clothing. The enemy uses the chaos of our broken and hurting world to distract us with the worries of tomorrow. But Jesus redirects our focus onto the bigger picture. It's in that moment 
that Jesus reintroduces a characteristic of God that can be found all throughout the Old Testament. It's a characteristic of God that we too easily forget. God, the provider. Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, for your heavenly Father feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? Can you all your worries add a single moment to your life? I tell you not to worry about everyday life. Because God, the provider who loves you, will always meet your needs. Jesus is not describing an ideal world to work towards. He's not calling us to live lives of inaction and laziness. He's calling us to live lives of actionable obedience to God, the provider. Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns. But there isn't a day that a bird doesn't go out in search of food or materials to build its nest. The bird goes out knowing each day it will find exactly what it needs to make it through that day. It doesn't have to worry about what's coming tomorrow or sit around. It doesn't sit around waiting for a seed or a worm to fall into its mouth. It goes out and is obedient to the instinct that God has instilled in it. It goes out obedient knowing that its needs will be met. For us, as imagers of Yahweh, our instinct has become muddled with the gift of free will. The brokenness of sin leaves us in a state of blurred focus. So this morning, hear the call of Jesus to clear up your vision and recognize the power that's found in God. With an obedient, spirit-filled heart, our vision becomes clear. The distractions fade away, and our instinct can lead us in the direction of God's voice. Psalm 34, verses 8 through 10. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, the joys of those who take refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you his godly people, for those who fear him will have all that they need. Even strong young lions sometimes go hungry, but those who trust in the Lord will lack no good thing. So Jesus stands and speaks to the crowd. Look at the lilies in the field and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing, yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for these wildflowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? Don't worry about these things, saying, what will we eat, what will we drink, what will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers, but your heavenly Father already knows your needs. Jesus is called on our life as disciples to live seeing the bigger picture. Our faith is not just in God the conqueror. It's not just in God the creator. Our faith is in God the provider. Often we sit back and we view our faith as this passive activity. Praying, waiting, waiting for God to show up, swoop in and save the day in this mighty display of divine power. When will God show up? I'll sit and I'll wait and I'll look. This leaves us sitting on the sidelines, watching as the world goes by, worrying about what's coming next. Why do you have so little faith? So don't worry about these things, saying what will we eat, what will we drink, what will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers, but your heavenly Father already knows your needs. Jesus is calling our lives as disciples is to see the bigger picture, that discipleship is not a spectator sport. Our faith in God the provider is a faith that requires action. As disciples, we have to live lives that are focused on God's faithfulness to provide for us and equip us to meet those unknown challenges of tomorrow. Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 through 3 and verse 6. Faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of the things we cannot see. By faith, we understand that the entire universe was formed at God's command, that what we now see did not come from anything that can be seen. And it's impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. Discipleship is not a spectator sport. 
we actively live out our faith, trusting in God, the provider. You know, when I turn on the news in the morning, it almost feels like I, I put the TV on right in the middle of a movie. All the, the chaos, the unknown, everything that's going on, every image that flashes up, it feels like, like no one could write this script. I mean, it, it's the greatest movie that's ever played out. Everything that's going on with sprinkles of good news here or there that make you kind of perk up and listen in and then bang, something else happens. No one could write a better movie. But we can't detach from this chaos. We can't escape and get away from it. Right? The, it's the real world. The screen won't fade to black. The credits aren't going to roll. Tomorrow when you wake up, that same movie is still going to be playing. It's ever-present and it's inescapable. But you didn't come here this morning to be reminded of the chaos that's going on right now in our world. And I hope you didn't come here this morning to escape reality just to hear a good story. This morning, whether you came for it or not, you're here to hear the gospel, the good news. And the good news is that the story that's playing out in our world before us, the fear, the pain, the chaos, the unknown, is not something that we're held victim to. It's not something we're trapped in. We're not passive audience members watching the brokenness and hurting of our world play out before us on the screen. You and I were created to have an active role in the authorship of history. We as imagers of the living God are called to break through the anxiety that floods humanity's existence. We're called to live lives that reflect the everlasting peace that can only be found in Jesus. A peace that requires us to refocus our hearts and minds onto the one who matters, God the provider. I tell you not to worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food and enough drink or enough clothes to wear. Isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Jesus' words are an actionable instruction for life now. He's calling for us to live lives of faithful obedience, that we should not be anxious about the unknowns of tomorrow. Our faith is in God the provider who will equip us to go forward into the unknown. In his name, doing his work. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. As Christians living in a broken and hurting world, it can feel as though we're holding on to an idealistic philosophy. And with each passing day, it becomes more and more unrealistic. But the truth is, is that Jesus' teachings are not a metaphorical theory, not something we're reaching out for in the distance. They're an instruction to live lives now that is obedient to the great provider. Do not worry about everyday life. When you have enough food to drink, or enough food to eat and drink to drink, or enough clothes to wear, isn't life more than food in your body, more than clothing? Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, for your heavenly Father feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? And just as a bird goes out each day, searching for food, knowing it will be there, trusting that its needs will be met, we are to go out obediently, listening to the will of God, knowing that no matter where he leads us, he will provide and equip us. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. Thanks again for tuning in this morning, guys. As you go forward this week, be reminded of God as our provider, who equips us to go boldly into the unknown, who calls us to go out into the mission field and not sit passively on the sidelines because we have a vision and a focus set firmly on his heavenly kingdom, on his eternity, and we are not held captive to the fear and anxieties of the chaos in our broken and hurting world.